Hello and welcome to this week's show. Uh, 1975, The Wind and the Lion. Um, the tag legend is very much overused these days. You only have to pop out for milk and bread and come back with a full pack of beer and a rather unsuspecting taco bell and all of a sudden you've earned the title of legend. Well, a man who has earned the title of legend is the stunt coordinator and stunt performer on this particular film, and he joins us now. Terry Leonard. I went over there to double Sean Connery, did just about, uh, unless there were uh, multiple stunts with guys like, we had Jimmy Shepard and Larry Randalls and Mickey Gilbert and myself. And Larry got hurt severely. We had to fly him out of Almeria. So it was Shepard and Gilbert and myself left on the movie. And before they got there, we did a bunch of stuff. Yeah. And they came for the final battle. And, uh, yeah, we did the, the deal through the trellis when the Rizuli comes through to capture Mrs. Pettigarris and her two kids and ride the horses up into the building. We had to, we had to support the building. And I knew it, it, those horses started to feel vibration and stuff. You never know what they're going to do. No, exactly. They, they, Different, they might jump off of the third floor, and we don't want that. No. So anyway, was, there was a lot of preparation for it. And then the, the scene that I got hurt the worst on, when the story was that as as Billy Williams, who's the director of photography, was sitting with, with Candy Bergen having wine, uh -huh. and the servant comes out of the house with the wine on a silver platter, on a bottle of wine. Yes. And he falls over on the table, he's got a knife sticking out of his back. Right. Boom, here comes the music. Now the horses jump through the trellis, and they're going to attack the <laughs> residents of yes. Mrs. Pettigarris. I did a couple running W's in the courtyard, and then the story is that Billy Williams shoots this guy that's galloping towards him. That's right. He continues out and crashes through the window and goes into the city of Tangiers below. Yes. Now that's going to be done... With me going out the window, Billy Williams had cut a Billy shooting, and then we built a ramp. It was worth 16 feet in the air, and we built a ramp about six feet down from the lip so that when the horse jumps out through the window, he starts going down and starts a progression down, cut. Okay. Whatever happens after that, I hopefully I'm going to slide him on his ass and get him to the bottom of the hill, and we're cool. And then they go to a green screen shot. And they comp in Tangiers below, and we go off an ore tower in Almeria into the water, into the Mediterranean with a dummy horse. Right. Editorially, that's going to take a lot of time. So Milius opted to stay with just the crash through the window right. and involve the city below. Mm -hmm. So I run and w that horse through the window. And Ronnie Taylor, God bless you, he became an Academy Award-winning director of photography, but he was an operator. And he missed the shot. So now we've got to do it again. I said, I, I, I can't gamble on doing a run and W through here again. I'll just jump him out the window. Yeah. Well, I had no idea the horse had this kind of heart. And when I spurred him out the window, he, I, I'm out of my, my torso is out of top frame. He yeah. jumped so high getting out of the window. Now we're going, as the ramp falls away, it, he, even though he's a certain height over the, the wall, as the ramp falls away from him, it becomes higher and higher and higher. Yes, of course. And down we came, and he tumbled over the top of me and knocked me out for who knows. I guess I was out for about eight hours. Boy. And had broken my back and didn't know it. The horse got up and ran off. He was fine. The horse survived the whole deal. I didn't. They sent me to, they sent me to Madrid to be x-rayed at the American Hospital in Madrid, and they said, Senor Leonard, you do not have a broken back. You just have a very bad bruise. I clapped my hands and said, yippee. In six weeks, we're going to do the final battle, so now I'll be able to make some money. <laughs> so that's your favorite well, bruise. <laughs> I didn't know I had a broken back, and I'm doing all those running Ws and toe tappers and saddle falls and everything that went on on the wind of the lion yeah. in the final battle. And if I had cracked my, I, I, I had cracked my sixth thoracic vertebrae. Wow. If that thing let to go, I'd be paralyzed. I was going to say, you done, yeah. So the good Lord was riding with me on that. Well, a run and W is a way that the Mexicans broke their horses to stop back in the late 1800s. And it's a cable that goes, it's threaded to a, a hobble on each leg, on each ankle, with a ring in it. And it goes up through a ring, back down through, through the ring on, the, on, the, on his foot, comes up, and they crosby it off or tie the cable up in that, in that ring under the saddle. 
and then the cable goes back however long you need to go to get up to speed. And there's a couple secrets to this. Um, wherever you thread the cable down whichever side, that's the side you're going to fall to. So if, you're, if you thread the cable down the right side of the horse, you'll fall to the left. You thread it down the left, you'll fall to the right. Oh, okay. um, and it's a hard fix. I mean, you go to the end of the cable, it brings your feet up to the ring, it's hanging off the cinch, snaps the cable, he does a full somersault, gets up and runs off. It happens so fast he doesn't even know that it's happened. Wow. Horses can get hurt in the film business. They can get hurt in any endeavor that they, you have. They can get hurt in the pasture mm -hmm. all by themselves. Yep. So I'm not diminishing that fact, but when we ask them to do something that is against their nature and is what we want to do, I personally take such great care of them you can't believe. I've done, Yakima did over 300 of those one and Ws and never hurt a horse. Really? I've done dozens of them, never hurt a horse, and I'm proud of that. Here's another one of those uh, toe tapper moments riding across here. You look at the right arm pulling up and the legs coming down. Here's Jim Shepard doing this and the fall in the courtyard. It's, it's extremely spectacular. It still is, but it's more, you know, they're, they're working in conjunction with each other. Um, Jim sadly passed away in 1980 um, working on a picture. And I'm sure we'll discuss that at a later point but that's an excellent uh, example of a toe tapper horse and jockey working in harmony Mickey Gilbert on the other hand doing a high fall here and almost touching the wall on the way down he like he pushes that um uh, he pushes that on the way down. That's extraordinary. Here's Larry Randall's good example look at the horse the head turning all the way round he's pulled that rein all the way down and then down onto the ground um, again, so many uh, Pedragosa and Cruz here and sort of head-on um, RTA, effectively, uh, is what's going on. But there's so many involved here. We've tried to pick out a few. Here's Juan Margin, uh doing a physical stunt as opposed to on horseback. And look, there's hundreds of horsemen here. I mean, there's, there's Spanish guys brought in from all over the world because um, they're working all over the place. Come back, come back to Spain, come and film here. You know, so they they brought them back. And there's some, again, wonderful examples of some of the horse falls here. I was going to have a look at a couple. These are Ws. This is a running W, three of them in a row. Uh, the horse, of course, complete somersault. Um, and if we look, and the rider being walked all over by the horse, there is the cinch with the little hole in the middle. And that uh, holds everything together. That's that's a vitally important part of, uh, of these falls. Um, Saddle falls. Here's another example of this is a toe tapper. Left arm. Try and have a look at the left arm. The left arm is being brought up. There's the elbow bent. So he's brought it all the way up to bring the two legs together and then is pitched. It's glorious to look at in slow motion. And uh, again, there's another one opposite him as well. That's a horse fall. More W's happening here. Look. Oh dear. But uh, it. Uh, just extraordinary. They, these horse falls are done en masse. They're very exciting to look at. Of course, you know, westerns were huge, and you had lots of these. Yakima Kurnut, of course, a great uh, exponent of the uh, of the horse fall. We're going to take a look at one. This is a pitfall with them um, four of them together, all on Ws. Don't see it terribly clearly there. There from they all flip over together. Uh, we're going to see um, Edward Deeds coming through here. Uh, in a great explosion, he just leaves now, and the explosion there, and as he comes through, it's a horse fall. Look at that, it's fantastic. You've got the archway exploding, you've got the horse coming through, it's magnificent. Absolutely magnificent. A very underrated movie. This is Juan Margin, who was doubling for um, Connery towards the end of the picture. Uh, obviously, Terry's still working on other, other parts here, and... Uh, Oops, picks up. Right, going to grab. Connor is a very good horseman, but I don't think even he was capable of doing this. So uh, Marjan leans out, takes the weapon from him. Fantastic. It's an extraordinary movie. Wind and the Lion is an extraordinary film. It's From an action point of view, it's a great uh, movie from, uh, from a standpoint of view, but it's, uh, it's also 
you know, stunt sequences supervised by Terry Leonard, and there was masses of them. And the Spanish unit, uh, Juan Marchand and Miguel Pedragosa, from their point of view, teamwork. I thought it would be important to add at this point the safety factors involved in working with animals on a film. The phrase, no animals were harmed during the filming of this motion picture, is a statement that's only added as a rule to movies where the American Humane Association have been present during filming. They make it very clear that um, what you can and can't do to any animal during the making of a film. As you've already heard from Terry, um, he is very careful when it comes to the safety of all animals used on any film. He's working on either as a performer or as a stunt coordinator, and The Wind and the Lion was no exception. In 1975, the running W, which we've looked at extensively here, was allowed to be used because of its traditions with the Mexican community and its effectiveness in what's called breaking a horse. And by that, for, for those who don't know what I mean, it's the training of a horse to do what you need or want it to do. It's since been outlawed and is no longer used in film and television, certainly not in the US or in the UK. I can't uh, speak directly for other countries at this time. The toe tapper, of course, was a fine alternative and meant that the stuntman uh, and horse had to work together during the training period. So not only was the horse used to the sound of battle around them, but was also a falling horse. And again, by that, I mean a horse trained to fall correctly um, and one that would be used to having the cable attached to its front legs by the stuntman, allowing it to still gallop freely until required to fall on command. In 2021, even the toe tapper is now seldom used since the introduction of CGI. And many falls of this nature where the horse is required to fall nose first and flip its back legs over in a sort of somersault style have now been replaced with motion capture. The falling horse is still an element though and this of course is where the stuntman pulls the right or left rein pulling the horse's head all the way round beyond the centre of balance and past the point of no return causing the horse to effectively lay down. Done at the canter this is still a very exciting thing to see on screen. That's it then for this week. Hope you enjoyed that. Keep spreading the word and subscribing to the channel and uh, to the podcast channel as well. All the details are in the notes below. Now, next week we turn to comedy action, which is a very different kettle of fish and approached very differently too, and perhaps best demonstrated through the eyes of one of the world's most famous characters. One of my favourite comedy series, it's Peter Sellers as Inspector Clizer. And episode four in that series of movies, which is The Pink Panther Strikes Again. Duh. Uh. See you next week. Abien too. <laughs>